Hi guys and welcome to your weekly horoscope. This one is for Monday the 2nd of October going through until Sunday the 8th of October 2023. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you today. I'm going to go through each day of the week to see what the planets are doing to give you a sense of how the planets interact, what energy they create amongst themselves. And the point of these horoscopes then is to try and get a sense of what that energy is doing so you can make the most of the good stuff and avoid some of the potential negatives that come along with that good stuff. Now, you may start the week feeling a little bit frazzled. Last week was, for me personally, really difficult. We had this full moon in Aries, and it was a really tough time where I felt super stressed, but I wasn't getting very much done at all. And the reason for that was because I felt like I was constantly at odds with myself, and anything I wanted to do, which normally seems easy, suddenly became very difficult and it felt like I was constantly standing in my own way. So it was a really frustrating week. This week is very different. We really turned the corner here on Monday. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each day to see how this week is going to, um, what this week is going to look like. Starting with Monday, the 2nd of October, the first thing that's really positive and reassuring is that we have the moon in Taurus. The moon is the way you feel. Taurus is an earth sign. It's a fixed sign. And it's a sign that is able to take control of the situation and to make things happen to affect change, right? It conjuncts Uranus and Taurus. So you're not going to be afraid of making change or even um, uprooting things or creating chaos, which where the outcome isn't guaranteed. Even those kind of things, you're going to be very optimistic and motivated about. And in fact, you want to make things happen. You want to affect change. Change here by these two things is better than no change regardless of what it actually is. The Taurus moon also squares Venus in Leo. Venus in Leo is a star. Venus is the creative planet of love and beauty. In Leo, she wants to present and be creative and put herself out there and get a round of applause. The moon also trines Mercury in Virgo, Pluto in Capricorn, and it sextiles Neptune in Pisces, and it quincuxes Mars in Libra. So Mercury in Virgo, Mercury in itself is the communication planet. It rules Virgo, so it's very happy in that sign. And the switch is on the inward position. Mercury in Virgo listens and studies and learns and builds its expertise and skills. Pluto in Capricorn says, please work towards changing things. Neptune in Pisces gives you the bigger vision of what could happen. And Mars in Libra allows you to work with other people very well. So Monday is really like an amazing day where you're operating on all these different levels and you're doing really well. Mercury in Virgo also opposes Neptune in Pisces and that's always an interesting opposition because Mercury in Virgo is very focused on the real world, the here and now, what the details are and how you can work with them and make them right. Virgo likes perfection. <laughs> and Neptune in Pisces is really about, there are many other worlds other than this one. There's a bigger truth. There's a huge universe out there with lots of information and answers, and I want to connect to that. So the opposition of those two, I think is work, gonna work nicely here on Monday, where you're able to focus on what's happening in your physical life right now, but you're also able to maintain this perspective of this is the bigger picture and what's important. So it allows you not to sweat the small stuff and kind of get stuck on things. So Monday is an amazing day to start the week where you firmly stand in your own power, you know what you want to be doing and how you can make that happen. You're able to work with information very, very well. So if anything has been eluding you, the answer to some sort of problem, find the answer now, you'll get it. Um, and you also have that bigger perspective that you can share with other people or you know, do teamwork or group work, anything like that works really well. So it's an absolute dream of a day that is super conducive in helping you to make your hopes and dreams a reality. Really amazing Monday, great start to the week. Tuesday the 3rd of October, we've got the moon going into Gemini, three minutes past seven. The moon in Gemini is also very focused on information. Gemini is also ruled by Mercury, the communication planet. But Gemini is much more about, I am taking an active role in solving problems. I'm adding information, I'm expressing myself. So we've got a lot of communication here happening on Monday, Tuesday, so that's gonna go very nicely. The Gemini moon then squares Saturn in Pisces. So that's a good connection to yourself, your own truths, your own belief system, what you think is important. So you're not gonna find it, um, you're, you're not gonna find that you're easily influenced or swayed from what you think is right and good. And it also trines the sun in Libra. So again, you're able to work with other people very well. You're able to be considerate, to think about how your actions may impact another person. But what's missing is that frustration that we had last week. So this is really nice to kind of 
get amongst the people and work with them and do things as a team. Mercury in Virgo still. So we've got Mercury in Virgo inwards and then the moon in Gemini. So if you're a writer or a teacher or anyone who works with communication, info, a professor, anything like that, it's a great day for you. Mercury in Virgo does try and Pluto and Capricorn though. So particularly if there's a real world problem that's bothering you, that's hanging above you, you'll figure out how to solve that on Tuesday. Also on Tuesday, Venus in Leo, Queen Cuxes, Neptune in Pisces. So this is really now your imagination takes off and you could go into daydreaming mode where it's like, wow, I can see myself as this, this, this famous, this star, this amazing, <laughs> it's the dream of what could be. So it's just fun sometimes to daydream and to just explore those kind of things. But also in, in a real sense, it's a, it's a moment where it's like, wow, I recognize that for instance, I have a beautiful singing voice and I should do something with that. And the vision then becomes so great and, and you can almost like smell it and taste it and feel it, you know, that it motivates you to actually do something about it. So daydreaming isn't bad. One, it can be pleasurable in the moment. And second of all, that's where the source of your new kind of targets and goals and actions come from. So on Tuesday, you become more communicative and you also become more focused on working towards some sort of personal goal that doesn't exist yet in reality. If you want to especially change your role, whether that's at home or at work or with your friends, you know, the dynamic or the way people see you, <clears throat> You're able to adapt that and change that so that you're more front stage and center. So it's a good day to lean into this desire if it exists for you. You know, that just reminds me of something that I experienced. Like I had lots of different jobs, right? I, I trained um, in communication and then I worked in finance and I worked in education and stuff. And then when I, when I started doing this, my passion, the astrology and then tarot, after a long time of searching, People who'd known me for a long time were like, oh, you know, I didn't realize that this is something you could do or you'd be comfortable doing or whatever. And it was interesting to, ugh, there's a fly on my neck. It was interesting to notice that in terms of other people respond to you in terms of what you show them. You know, if you're an accountant, but you feel like a, a, a Vegas showgirl, then no one's gonna treat you as a Vegas showgirl until you actually go to Vegas and you perform they'll treat you like an accountant. That you, you may think I'm stating the obvious with that, but for me, that was a real eye opener in terms of if I want other people to, or my actions are really influential in how other people respond to me. You may think that's something you learned at the age of three, but for some of us, it takes a little bit longer. On Wednesday, the 4th of October, we have the Gemini moon now forming a square with Neptune and Pisces. Okay, so if you're an artist, a poet, a singer, a musician, a healer, that's amazing. Because Gemini, think of that, the moon in Gemini, as a doorway into your heart. And Neptune is your, your um, phone to the higher realms. So you're really able to connect with your guides, your angels, your intuition, your gut feeling. It trines Mars and Libra, so I'm able to connect with other people very well, but also Mars and Libra in this sense is, I have a desire to express myself creatively. It sextiles Chiron in Aries and Venus in Leo. So me expressing my views and my creativity isn't just something that's good and fun and validating. It feels healing to me. So, you know, if, if you find that the book you're writing at the moment is super cathartic, then sit down on Wednesday and write another chapter because that's going to just flow. Anything that you can get out of you in a creative sense that is like a release works really nicely on Wednesday. Mercury enters Libra on Wednesday the 4th, which to me, Libra is an air sign. It's about connection. It's about communication. It's about compromise. It's about creativity, design, beauty. In an air sign and air is communication, ideas and thoughts. So it's not a bad fit for Mercury, right? But in this sense, and feel free to disagree with me, but I get that Mercury going into Libra is similar to what we had in the sense of last week, as in, okay, I'm trying to be a star here, but now I have to consider other people again. Wah, wah. <laughs> you know, it's that kind of vibe. It's like, I'm not really that interested, but I'm supposed to, so it's my duty. So if you get that sense, I think it's much better to focus on your own kind of stuff that feels healing than to 
get involved with things you really don't want to be part of. Ultimately, Wednesday, the 4th of October, I think is great because it's dreamy, it's intuitive, fantasies abound. So, you know, we need dreams and fantasies and hopes to kind of, I'm sorry, I'm speaking for myself, to kind of give us something to hold on to in life. If it's like there's no hope, nothing will ever get better. It's really like a downer. So just on a practical sense, having a dream is really like an important thing to have. So you're able to tap into those. So if you felt like, oh, you know, I've been out of this pink bubble, I feel aimless, directionless, hopeless. Wednesday is a great day to rediscover all of that. But what's also interesting on Wednesday the 4th, it's, it's the first time in like more than a week that there's a real sense of ease. Tension has been high. So it's a good chance to not just find the dream, but even more simply just to relax if things have been too much lately. The focus also starts to shift later on in the day and you become interested in your personal connections with people. And then, you know, everything that comes along with connections to people. So if I'm single and I want a partner, then I have to go through that whole dating thing where people ghost you and, and people... Uh, you know, it, it, everything that comes along with that, and that can often consume a lot of your energy. And while you're trying to figure things out, it can become a real focus and take you away from your own thing. So Wednesday is, I think the best thing is to be creative, healing, intuitive, and to simply connect with yourself and to chill and relax. And I would avoid unnecessary complications on Wednesday. On Thursday, the 5th of October, we have the Gemini moon now forming a square with Neptune and Pisces, still. Did that this day before as well so the dream the vision the fantasy is accessible it sextiles venus in leo but i'm a star why don't you understand that i'm a star and then pluto and capricorn no one understands i'm a star i'm gonna work to make people <laughs> understand that so it's interesting that's the second time i've mentioned that so the way people see you if that's not accurate or it doesn't it doesn't you don't like it then this week is an opportunity to take action, which are going to, actions, plural, which are going to alter other people's perception of who you are and your identity. And what's also interesting and ironic is that the less you care about other people in that process, the more profound it's going to be. So I'm not going to talk to um, my friends five times a day today. I'm going to um, apply to this um, theater role. I'm going to get the part and I'm going to go do that. You get the part, you start going up on stage, you invite people to come and see your performance. That's when they see you differently. If you sit down with them before and you're like, do you know what? I've always had a dream of being a performer. They'll be like, oh yeah, that's nice. What are you gonna do about it? Or it's not a real thing. So most people won't pay much attention to it. Yes, the moon enters Cancer at 2.32 in the afternoon. The moon in Cancer is very much, I'm the parent, I wanna take care of other people. So you can see the direction this is heading now. It's away from you and towards others. The Cancer moon then squares Mercury in Libra. Sorry, I'm making a face because I really don't want to be a babysitter. I don't like that job. I don't wanna be responsible for your feelings. I don't wanna try and figure out what you're thinking. To me, it's exhausting you may feel differently um but the cancer moon squares mercury in libra so it's all about others and you know the connection and it trines saturn in pisces so it's different <laughs> my answer to that is different because cancer moon and uh, mercury in libra it's all about this connection but the trine with saturn in pisces it's a pleasure to be around other people and to talk to them it's not i'm a babysitter i get to spend time with you so that's a lot better. Mercury in Libra, Queen Cuxus, Saturn in Pisces. Wow, so that's very different because now I want to connect with the higher realms and see what they have to say. And then Mars in Libra, also Queen Cuxus, Neptune in Pisces. So again, when I would now extend Wednesday, the fantasy and the ability to connect with the higher realms, I would also now associate to, with that with Thursday. It's a very good opportunity to do that. Um, so on Thursday, anyone who works creatively is going to be supported or as a healer or any of those water things that are ruled by water. The vision and the action are there to help you produce something wonderful. Also an opportunity to get creative on what you want. To, okay, that doesn't make any sense. So you're able to focus on what you want to do next and you're able to get creative around that. So I want to um, be the head of a company 
So how am I going to achieve that? I can either start my own or train or get, you know, it's the, you see what the options are and then you're able to move ahead with those. I love dogs, sorry, I'm, uh, I love dogs, but that kind of yapping, I was, uh, they were back there earlier and every time they throw the ball, the dog barks. That would get on my nerves. Late, you can tell I'm, I'm not feeling 100% today. I'm a little grumpy. <laughs> Later on in the day, confusion and misunderstanding could creep in. This is on Thursday the 5th. So make sure you keep things clear and straightforward. So despite all this um, ability to connect with other people, it becomes a little fuzzy and you may get um, distracted or what am I actually doing? Me or them? or oh. So it becomes a bit much on Thursday. So again, just keep it simple. Focus on the creativity, the connection stuff. Friday, the 6th of October, things become more problematic. So the, the start of the week, as you could tell, is really solid and you're like a builder, right? And then Wednesday, Thursday, it becomes more kind of about the answers and the inward world and creativity and what's happening here. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I think it's back to other people, but there's real room for conflict now. And the reason I'm saying that is Friday the 6th of October, we have Venus in Leo, Queen Cux in Pluto and Capricorn. So there are things that are happening in my life, there are changes going on that are detracting from me being feeling good and being center stage and doing my thing. So there are problems in my life which irritates me. The Cancer Moon squares the Sun in Libra and still I feel this annoying sense of duty and obligation to be there for other people. Um, it also squares Chiron and Aries, but what about me? And I said that last week as well, so similar frustration now at the weekend. And it sextiles Jupiter and Taurus, so this big indecision is huge. And it's like, am I coming or going? So on Friday the 6th of October, first and foremost, I think you may experience a setback or a delay, which can bring up a lot of frustration. And then others who don't seem to understand your plight will become easy targets. And then it's this. It's your fault. <laughs> so the weekend, we're returning to the friction and the tension of last week. And you know, that's the da downside of the Libra Aries axis. Libra is an air sign. It is creative and beautiful and it can design and it can make relationships really rich and warm and wonderful. But I always consider the sign opposite. And Aries is very much about the self and overcoming obstacles. And the axis is shared, right? So I think that Libra is very good at, at maintaining relationships, but it's tough. It's not from any, it's not from the place of anything goes. It's much more about I'm in charge of this group and I'm going to make sure the dialogue is constructive and useful. I'm going to make sure people don't swear and offend others. It's very much the teacher, I think in this case. So that's what I think gets on your nerves. It's like I've got this cosmic teacher telling me to do my homework in my ear and I really don't want to right now, okay? And if anyone has that sense, you can tell how that can easily spill over into an argument. It's like I've told you twice that I'm not interested, leave me alone, okay? Back off. And, if, and then still, if you're being pushed, then it can blow up into something much bigger. Saturday, the 7th of October, we've got the Cancer Moon opposing Pluto and Capricorn. <laughs> okay, so I am not your parent. I am someone who is willing to see this relationship for what it is right now at, let's say, 10.05 on Saturday morning. And if you get on my nerves, I have no problem of cutting you off and pressing block on the phone. It's really extreme. It's like the opposite of being like the parental figure. It's like I'm the non-parental figure, okay? And if you're looking to me to sort out your problems, I'm not having it. So on Saturday, you're tough. You're a little harsh. You're um, almost like recoiling from any kind of pressure or responsibility being put on you. And it's like you're turning your back on why am I being told to play nice and to compromise all the time? I'm, I'm done. So you lose your patience. It, um, the Cancer Moon squares Mars in Libra, and there's this ongoing sense that, well, the answers lie with other people, so I need them. I have to kind of put a lid on my own feelings. So again, it's very similar to last week. It trines Neptune and Pisces and sextiles Uranus and Taurus. So this is that willingness to create 
chaos for the fun of it to burn a bridge because you like the flames you know i've i've had in my past i've had that experience um where i've been friends with people and they've done things that um i didn't like or that i felt betrayed by or hurt by and instead of this is a mistake i've made and in turn rather than sucking it up and uh, talking to those people maybe picking up the phone and saying you know what happened between us why is this I had a period in my life where I would just block and I'd be like, I'm never talking to you again. And it's not, ultimately, it's an overreaction. I think it stems from insecurity, to be honest, or a sense that I'm hurt, I'm the victim, whatever it may be. But it's not, obviously, and again, most of you will understand this, <laughs> it's not conducive to building long-term friendships because sooner or later, everyone's going to get on your nerves. So with this, I would bear this in mind and say, Okay, I feel like something is hanging over me or looming on me. That's not the worst feeling I've had in my life. I can tolerate this. And the reason I'm saying that is it's far more draining emotionally to go into a big screaming match than to simply like go, okay, this isn't ideal, but I can tolerate it. <clears throat> the sun in Libra, Queen Cux is Jupiter in Taurus. So it magnifies these kind of issues and indecisions. On Saturday, the 7th, if there's undue pressure on this day, especially via other people, you're likely to blow up. So watch out for the explosions. It feels like you're spinning a lot of plates, anxiety may be present, and there's the potential for the straw to break the camel's back. You know what I mean? So take it easy today, spend time taking care of yourself and recharging your batteries for a more comforting and nurturing sense of self. It's, it's almost like having this inner gremlin inside you which is constantly shrieking and saying, cause trouble, go cause trouble. Sunday the 8th of October, the moon goes into Leo at 1.24 uh, in the morning. And that's nice because the moon in Leo kind of burns away this indecision. It squares Jupiter in Taurus, it sextiles Mercury in Libra and it quincuxes Saturn in Pisces. So now Sunday we're returning to Monday where things don't jar anymore like they have on Friday, Saturday. <clears throat> they all fit perfectly together like the pieces of a puzzle. You're interested in exercise, you're motivated, you're not tortured by indecision communication and your relationships with other people becomes less stifled less pressured and you have a, a greater sense of well-being so the day before is important because on sunday you really arrive at a solid place of oh, i can decompress mars and libra because a lot of these issues are because you're overwhelmed and because you're you don't have enough time you're frustrated things aren't going the way you want so the easiest thing to do, the thing that's closest to you, because we have all this relationship stuff, is other people. So avoid that wherever you possibly can. On Sunday, Mars in Libra squares Pluto and Capricorn. And then finally, Venus enters Virgo. So you're calmer, you're more objective. You're willing to get, make change happen with other people. And it's not me against the world. It's me. I'm a part of the world now. So the big no-no or the big thing to watch out for is the early weekend, Friday, Saturday. On Sunday, optimism and motivation and hope for the future, all of those things return and you have a much greater sense of oh, everything's fine. The, the rest on the previous day is something really to consider on Saturday because on Sunday you're able to get back to a place where you feel solid, you're full of energy, you're able to defend your position without blowing up, you're able to deal with conflict in a, in a constructive way and you're still able to get things done. So if you possibly can, kind of try and schedule things that you have less to do on Friday and Saturday and get most of the work and the connection stuff done during the other days to have um, an easier time and that so that you don't feel frazzled and angry. So it's interesting, we're not in the easiest time of the year here. Last week wasn't the easiest. This week is an improvement, but it's still not the easiest. And um, the quality that I find is most jarring is the sense of being tough on yourself, as in you have to be a constructive and positive and understanding member of society, and there is no other option. It's almost like you're being terrorized by an inner sense of perfectionism that says, I need to be able to get on with absolutely everybody. And most of us can't get on with absolutely everybody. Some people can, I can't. And I, don't, I, I think that's normal. I'm not particularly concerned about that. So see where you are with that. 
but try and be nice to yourself and like these are the the potential frazzling moments i'm becoming aware of so if you want to avoid those please consider this info. So I hope that gives you an idea of what you'll be working with here this week. I hope you have a fabulous time. Check out the video on the full moon in um, Aries that happened on the 29th of September. It's still obviously relevant here. So if you want more information on that feeling of, Ugh, I'm being made to feel small here, then check out that video. Um, if you'd like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your reading to audio reading with me. In my personal readings, I use the tarot, astrology, numerology, and my intuition. If you have any questions about how do I get up on stage and present my talents? What is my true purpose when it comes to work or life? Or what's destined for me in terms of relationships and travel and education? What are my strengths and weaknesses? What's coming up in future? Where do I live? What are the best places for me? If you have any of those questions, please get in touch with me for a personal reading. I can answer all of those. Um, check out some of my other videos. I Full Moon and Aries, these weekly horoscopes. Thank you to everyone who's joined the channel as a member and who watches my daily tower readings. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. I hope you have a great week. I hope it's an improvement. Uh, keep me posted. Let me know how you get on in the comments and I will speak to you soon. All the best. Take care.